Hello folks and welcome. So LXQT, uh, this is not an overview, this is more like uh, tips for new users. I'll talk about the uh, panel bar, your desktop menu, and I'll uh, touch a little bit about the file manager. So generally LXQT desktops are considered lightweight desktops. However, this distribution, uh, as far as features are concerned, they are not lightweight. You can even do advanced stuff in your file managers. Now, a lot of people pick LXQT for, for a couple of reasons. One of them would be if they have an older computer, they are trying to run that on older hardware. But there's also folks out there that like to put LXQT on newer hardware and have it run very quickly. And this is not a stripped down um, desktop either. Um, a lot of the features like this CNS that you see down here, I press the caps lock key and it stays red to let me know my caps lock is on. So this is just one feature. So I'm gonna talk about the panel, changing the wallpaper, possibly the icon sizes, and a little bit about your file manager today. I am filming in 1080, so adjust your YouTube player if necessary. You can see my hardware is there. This command is called NeoFetch. Now this is Debian 12 Bookworm LXQT. So generally, if you want to use NeoFed, you have to install that. All right, I'm going to move on and let's start with the panel bar. Menu is here. You can change, uh, of course, the size of the actual font. So generally, this is default. So most of the stuff is all point and click. All right, so. Some of the other desktops maybe that you're thinking as lightweight, you probably are probably thinking you have to do everything manually. Actually not. Your button text is here in case you want to put something there. Otherwise, it looks like that on the corner, except it'll be all the way to the edge. We'll talk about the panel in a minute. So I will leave these on. Now, if you decide to use your own custom icon, you can. And also just remember this, that um, the icons that you have here is this is not the only one. Now you can see that I put in a, a blue one, but you can barely make out what the bird looks like. All right, but it's located in uh, USR Share LXQT graphics. A lot of those are PNGs and SVGs. I'm going to turn that off. All right, let's move to the panel bar itself. I'll start over here in the very right hand corner, probably where my subscription key is. And again, if you don't have enough time to watch this in one sitting, I do recommend subscription. I also have other 500 videos on all kinds of tips and tricks. So obviously that's probably self-explanatory, but I click it anyways. Miniature calendar, your volume thing and the mixer is on the top. You can actually open this up. Your input and output devices are right there. You probably saw the microphone flash because I'm talking. Simple screen recorder is what I'm using with this uh, particular uh, distribution to record this video, clipboard. And then these down here is your, well, I'll just name the two here. It's the caps lock and num lock, and the other one's the scroll lock. So uh, basically if I, I've already left this on when I started the video, and now I'm gonna turn my caps lock off. Now there's nothing worse than failing logins because you forgot your caps lock key is on. Now, some folks don't have LEDs on their keyboards. So sometimes you don't know if your caps lock is on or off. I'll put the numeric key lock on and I'll leave it there. It has an N on it. So uh, we're gonna first talk about the size of the panel. You can move it to the top, left or right. And then I'll talk about putting icons on this panel because it's not that intuitive. Right click. Instead of task manager, we're gonna go to panel. So the panel placement size is currently at 50. It will be a lot smaller when you first install this. And your icon sizes are here on your panel. Now, if you choose anything less than 100%, you can use the alignment. Now, generally it defaults to left, but if you want your panel balanced, in other words, have space on both sides, then you want that in the center, okay? You have styling and you have widgets here. Now, when you look at this, it looks like these are all grayed out, but they're actually active. 
Widgets are like toys. So you can see all of this is point and click. All right. So let's talk about these icons themselves. So generally, you'll only have a couple of these. And believe it or not, not even the web browser is going to be here. So I will remove that from the quick launch. And then we're going to put some of these on there. So if I go to Internet, I have Firefox sitting here. If I right click on it, I have add to desktop and copy. As a matter of fact, even if I do this one, you can see that I have only two options. So a lot of people think you can't put these on the panel. Actually, you can. Just click and drag this thing. Now it'll turn into a plus if you want to drop it on your desktop, but we're not going to do it over here. Now this says no across here. However, if I put it right in front of this icon, there's a plus now. And there's the icon. Do you need to move this? Right click, move to the left. That's all up to you. A popular icon you may want to put on your panel, maybe, is Synaptic Package Manager. Synaptic Package Manager, of course, is how you install software. I will drag it over to here, and it puts it right here on the end. And you can certainly move it to the left. So Synaptic Package Manager has Unix-root on it because you were requested when you installed Debian 12 LXQT desktop to put in a root password. So it's requiring that before you install something, whatever that password might be. You have 63,562 packages listed here. I'm sure you can find a thing or two. So uh, generally we would just click on that. Some things have screenshots, some things not so much. If you've never used Synaptic, you mark things for installation. If it require the, requires other stuff, you mark that also, and then you hit the apply button which is currently grayed out. All right, and some single packages don't require anything else. All right, so installing software is actually a piece of cake. So the menu itself, again, I pointed out that you can change the font sizes. So actually it looks like this when you open up the system for the first time. You do have a search feature here too. So it's not totally stripped down as some people may think for a lightweight desktop. So if I was looking for something, let me pick something out of the hat like LX image, I would click that and just start typing LX I M or I and it's already lit up. I hit enter and the image viewer opens up. Okay, I don't have anything to open. I'm I'm just going to leave it open, but uh, you can see it says image viewer right there. Okay. So in either case, I will continue. Now let's talk about the desktop. It only comes with one wallpaper. I actually made a text file to let you see where the original is located. Okay. This is a text editor. You may not know what Featherpad is, but it's a text editor nonetheless. There are many, many text ed editors out there. This is a nice one. This, I'm holding down the control key while scrolling back and forth on my computer mouse and it, it uh, will enlarge the text for you to view. But the wallpaper, original wallpaper is located in USR Share LXQT Themes Debian Wallpaper SVG just in case you change it and want to return it back to default. Because when you right click Desktop Preferences and you alter that, there's no default in here. All right, so you can go find different images and make them your backgrounds. I'll do computer guy. It's that simple and hit apply. And then I'll go back to my other piece of wallpaper, wherever that is. I think it was this one. All right, hit apply. So the general will give you the size of the icons if you want icons on your desktop. They're currently 9696. The smallest is 20 by 20. You can probably agree that's really dinky. The current font is 11. You can also change that. I think this is intuitive enough for me not to explain this. But I like the larger icons. That's just me. So I covered the background earlier. Again, I'm using my own background here. Um, there is a nice feature called slideshow in here, which you can enable. So select the folder or make up your own folder and then select it in here. 
then you can choose five minute increments to change your wallpaper or 10 minutes or 15 minutes. You get the idea. Or you can do it in hours, one hour and five minutes in this case. You can also randomize your slideshow. So not too bad for a lightweight desktop. I will uh, just hit OK and what's in the advanced if you need to turn off these icons. I generally don't have them, but I thought I'd leave it default today. But I, I usually turn off home trash computer network because when you open up your file manager, you have all that in here. Here's your trash, here's your home folder. And if I do computer, here's your file system. I'll touch on that a little bit later. All right, so if you wanted to turn these off, you can. Or if you just want the trash can, you have it. All right, and it's kind of bulgy looking. So if you empty it, all right, you can empty the trash by right clicking on it or you can open it. It's maybe a good idea to find out what's in there before you dump it. But um, when you empty the trash can, it comes, it becomes skinny. There's nothing in it. All right, so I already covered what we can do with shortcuts. So if you want to put something on your panel, it's not right click. Okay, you can see that when I right click on Libre Writer, you have new document and add to desktop and copy. But if you want it on your desktop, again, you drag it. Okay, first of all, let me grab it again. You grab it where it turns into that no symbol first. Then you move it into this area in front of your last icon on the left. And as soon as it turns into a plus, let go of it. If you need to move that to your left, then right click, move to the left. And then move it again if, if you need to move it to the right or the left again. You can see I'm rearranging the furniture. So it's not impossible to put icons on this panel bar. But it's not that intuitive though, because when you open this up, I'll just use the last one so you can see what, what the drop down is. I'm right clicking. There's just add to desktop and copy. There's nothing about putting it on the panel. Like an XFCE desktop, you will actually have that option there, but not on this one. But you can still drag the icon directly on the panel. All right, the last thing I'm gonna talk about folks is uh, I'm at 12 minutes. Hopefully you got enough time to watch this, if not, subscription key I do have 500 videos is this file manager the file manager for this distribution is FMPC or PC <laughs> let me try that I apologize Dixalexia is a terrible thing uh, PC man FM QT that's the lightweight file manager but it's not lightweight in functions you can probably tell I have a SharePoint here and that is SMB I'm going to just log in anonymously all right, you can find your share points by clicking network. I also have SFTP sitting here and it's on the same machine actually. It's running two different kind of services. I'm not going to mount them. When you normally mount something and close, sometimes this will close the actual file manager and you got your home folder and you got your regular folders. You can always right click and resize the window. Now I'm just going to make mention of the fact that normally if I'm running a Nemo, Dolphin and some of the other um, file managers, you can normally hold down the control key and scroll back and forth to resize icons. In this particular version, you'll need to do edit, preferences, display. Then you can change those icons. I'll make them dinky, 32 by 32. I wanna say the default is the next one up. This is also not that big either. So um, that is called the size of the side pane icons and I believe there are 22 if I recall they're small so I'm going to resize both sides of the house now so basically I want the 96 by 96 because I am in 1080 mode and I want that at uh, we can try 48 and see what that looks like and that's still fairly good and keep in mind the separator is right here this also has some nice features like F6 where you can do split panes I'm going to open up the SharePoint and connect anonymously on this side of the house and leave that as Tom, our made up name user, subfolders. And I can drag and drop files. Okay, drag and drop is very easy to do. 
You also have another feature in here, connect to server. You can do SSH, you can do FTP, web dev, and etc. You can also do SFTP, and you can do it from the address bar even. Let me show you that example. All right, you can do bookmarks also once you've got these things logged in. It's pretty simple, add bookmark, and you can see I have two of them. All right, if I do a control L as in Larry, the address bar lights up. If I type in two S's and an H, I'd rather do that than type in SFTP, Secure File Transfer Protocol, because SSH is faster. Don't forget the colon and the two forward slashes. All right, I have a, um, a machine that is running a couple of services on my network. So I'm going to SSH into that machine using SFTP with a username and password. So it's username at, you're going to need to set that up ahead of time, of course. And uh, we can either do it by IP address. So my current address would be starting with 192. Maybe yours is also. Or I can use the name of the computer, dot local. And I can also put the name of the computer into my hosts file if I wanted to go that route. But I'll just make it simple. I've already accepted the security certificate earlier. It's an ED25519. All right, it's just asking for a password. And uh, now I'm connected, or it will be if I put in the right password. Otherwise, it'll fail, just like it just did. There we go. Now I should be connected. And now I have full control of this folder remotely. And you, you guessed it, I can use the F6 to um, separate the two windows and I can give it one more space here, more space there. That's all up to you. And, uh, and again, you can resize the icons. Just remember, it'll resize both of them. And you can drag and drop files. So an example would be this side of the house would be Tom's home folder. This would be a remote machine, drag and drop. Very simple to do. You can always bookmark these. You notice that it says SFTP instead of SSH. That's because that's how that protocol is run. All right, I'm at 17 minutes. I'm gonna do a recap. Your panel bar is configured this way, height, icon size, and then length. You don't have to use 100%. You can see the gaps I have in here. If you are doing that, then you may wanna investigate the alignment. If you don't like the bottom, you can go to the top. I didn't show that earlier, but it's pretty simple. You lose a little bit of real estate when you do left and right. Plus, uh, this will be configured slightly different. So I, for my screen, I prefer bottom or top. So I can get more real estate down here. And don't forget, you got toys over here. And this is not grayed out. You can just click it and investigate those toys. Right click on this icon and you can configure your application menu. You can put whatever text you want in here to display. If you want to put my machine, so be it. All right, you can, uh, I'm not going to show how to do custom icons, but that can be done. And then you can put in uh, again your label and also you can do your custom font. So if you don't like the 13, how about a 15? There you go. Right click on your desktop. We have desktop preferences. The first thing you'll see on the general is the physical size of these. Then you have your background, which again is located in your USR Share LXQT Themes Debian Wallpaper.svg. That's your original wallpaper. Uh, you can browse for your own. As you can see, I'm using my own. And don't forget, there's a slideshow thing here. You can just turn it on. The advanced is where you can turn on the icons or off the icons, your choice. Just don't forget to hit the apply key. Thank you for watching.